This is Business Analytics Using Forecasting, and I'm Galich Mueli. In the previous video, we saw how a neural network can capture a complex relationship between inputs and an output using hidden layers, or what we called derived variables. In this video, we're going to see how to apply a neural network to time series data in order to derive forecasts. Running a neural network is not completely automated, and the user has to make several choices. So we're going to have to talk about three steps that we need to go through. One is pre-processing the data. Then we're going to have to make choices about network architecture, and we'll define what that is. And finally, we're going to have to say something about how to start the algorithm parameters. The first step is pre-processing the data. And here, like before, we're going to explore the data so that we can identify different patterns, and we're going to use our domain knowledge as well. First, we have to choose the predictors that we want based on the patterns that we think that exist in the series. And we're going to create these derived variables just like what we did in regression. For example, if we return to our Amtrak ridership case, because this series had monthly seasonality, we need to choose how to capture it. One option is to use monthly dummies. Another option is to use lags, such as lag 1 all the way up to lag 12. Aside from detecting patterns, it's important to identify and handle unusual patterns, such as outliers and unusual periods. Otherwise, the neural network might try to learn those patterns as part of the systematic component of the series. For example, recall our example of quarterly soft drink sales. Notice that at the beginning of the series, there's an unusual year. Unless we think this is not unusual, we should probably not include this first period in the data given to the neural network. Furthermore, if you examine the actual data, you'll discover that many of the values have no decimal digits, while others do. This is suspicious. Maybe the integer numbers are rounded up? A neural network can be influenced by such quality issues. A third pre-processing step applies to numerical forecasts. And in that case, if we have variables that are very, very skewed, we might want to first transform them, such as taking a logarithm. We might also want to deseasonalize and or detrend the series before feeding it into the neural network. Whether these first two operations are needed or not are debatable. Some experts in neural nets say they're useless, and others say this really helps improve the performance. So you might want to try with and without and see where you get better results. The other thing to take into account is that we want to scale our variables to a scale of 0 to 1 if you're using a logistic activation function, or to a scale of negative 1 to 1 for a hyperbolic tangent function. Here's an example of a spreadsheet that we've created for the Amtrak ridership. In this example, we decided to capture seasonality using 12 lags. We then partitioned the data, keeping the last 12 months in our validation period. We'll use this example to illustrate the neural network. To run a neural network in Excel Miner, we can use the predict menu if we're trying to forecast a numerical number, or if we're trying to classify or forecast a binary outcome, we'll use the classify menu. In either case, we'll get a menu where we have to give the inputs and the outputs. In our example, the output is the ridership column, and our inputs are the 12 lags that we created earlier. The next step is where we have to specify the architecture or the structure of our network. This means that we have to tell the network how many hidden layers we want, and also, in each one of these layers, how many neurons to include. Remember that the more layers and more neurons, you're capturing a more complex relationship. But the price is that you're most likely going to overfit with too many. Different software have different options, but for example, in Excel Miner, it allows you to choose one or more hidden layers and then specify how many hidden neurons are available in each layer. Let's suppose for now that we're going to fit a model with a single hidden layer, and this layer will have only four hidden neurons. So we have 12 inputs, which are our lagged variables. We have a single output, which is our next month prediction and we have a hidden layer with four neurons. The other type of parameters that the user has to specify, 
or else just use the defaults, are different things called momentum, weight decay, gradient descent, step size, and these parameters relate to how the software optimizes the function. This is quite technical and most users don't really know what to do with it. So one option is to just use the software defaults. Or if you're tweaking, beware not to over tweak. If you do that, you might again be overfitting. If you're interested in more details about what these different parameters mean, you can check out the book Data Mining for Business Analytics in the chapter on neural networks. Here's the output that we get for the Amtrak data. We have a single layer here and we have the parameters that the algorithm estimated for us. These are not very useful or interpretable. What we care more about is the performance. And this is where we get the ordinary performance metrics and we can create the ordinary charts. We can see how the algorithm was learning and not doing very well at first, but then getting better as it gets more data. In R, we can use the nnetAR function. This function will only use lags as predictors, but it's very simple to use. It only allows a single hidden layer, but then you don't need to pre-process the series at all because everything is done automatically for you. The price is that you cannot include your trend, seasonal dummies, or external information. Running this model includes several parameters. The argument repeats controls the number of neural networks that it fits, and the default is 20. P is the number of lags to include from 1 until P, and here we chose 11, so it will include lags 1, 2, all the way to 11. Capital P is the number of seasonal lags. Since we have monthly seasonality, capital P equals 1 means that we want a lag of 12. So in short, we have lags 1 to 11 and lag 12. Finally, size is the number of neurons in the hidden layer. In this example, we chose to run 7. To see more details about this function, take a look at the Practical Time Series Forecasting with R textbook. Here's the output that we get using this function. We can see that in the validation period, the neural net doesn't properly capture the peaks and, and it tends to over forecast. Of course, this is just one setting and we can try other options. If we don't choose argument P, then the nnet AR will search for the best value for our series by fitting an autoregressive model. Of course, we must be aware of overfitting when we're doing that. Another option in R is to use the function avnnet and this is in the caret package. This is a slightly more complicated option, but it also allows you to include much more information. For example, you can include dummies and trends and lags and external information. But the price is that you have to do all the pre-processing manually yourself. Also, if the series is numerical, you'll need to first scale the values to the range of 0 to 1 or negative 1 to 1. As mentioned earlier, we can use neural nets to forecast numerical values or binary values. To forecast binary values, make sure to use an S-shaped activation function, such as the logit or hyperbolic tangent, so that your forecasts end up to be probabilities of the event of interest. If you want binary event no event forecasts, then make sure to also choose your cutoff value. This is the threshold that converts the forecasted probability into a binary forecast. To summarize, neural nets are data-driven prediction algorithms that can be used for forecasting. They can be automated so that the software searches over a range of networks and chooses the best one or it averages across many networks. For example, Excel Miner has an automated neural network option. Ours AVN net averages across multiple networks. Neural nets can be used to forecast numerical series as well as binary series. This is one advantage that they have over all the methods we discussed thus far. In terms of pre-processing, there are different ways to set up a neural network, and there's a disagreement on what's the best pre-processing approach. So, you have to try different setups. In any case, it's useful to detect and address outliers in unusual periods before you run the neural net. Because of its data-driven nature, and because it fits a very complex relationship, the neural net requires a sufficiently large number of observations in the training period. That's why it's typically used in high-frequency applications, such as trading and energy usage. Finally, neural nets are considered a black box because, unlike regression, 
we don't get coefficients that quantify the effect of different components, such as seasonality and trend. However, in forecasting, that's really not a serious problem, and it's not our main goal. Performance evaluation is extremely important with neural nets. Because they fit a complex relationship, they're easy to overfit. Make sure to compare the training and validation performance to make sure that you didn't overfit your data. Finally, neural nets are heavier to run. In some applications, this is acceptable, while in others, it really isn't. <laughs>